Throw there. Welcome to another edition of Out of the Blank. I'm your guest, Corey Armbrecht, and we're here with your host, Robbie Robertson. Hello. <laughs> so, what do you think we're going to talk about tonight, Robbie? I don't know, I just fucking woke up. <laughs> I didn't even know I passed out. Well, it is three years to the day of Harambe's passing. Harambe fucking died? Three years. I don't even know the story behind Harambe, sir. All right. I yeah. don't fully know either. Do you like cream I, soda? But it involves a boy falling into a gorilla... Enclosure. Yep. And the gorilla got really close to him, might have, like, pulled at him or whatever. And they, instead of tranquilizing or anything like that, they killed the gorilla. And Is that seen as a just kill? What do you think? You can take it and I mean, I play devil's advocate. I can see the good part about um, this, they're, them trying to neutralize a target that could be hostile um, towards, you know, Harambe. I mean, you have towards to look. The kid. Well, you have to look. Harambe is seen as hostile because it is a gorilla, it is an animal, it is a creature that we might have possi Powerful. possibly evolved from, but the whole aspect, like, it's un... We can't understand it, what it would do. We don't know right. its train of thought, much right. like a person. People we don't, are screaming and shit, like, oh, there's a boy down there, blah, blah, blah. Like, so it is possible like it could have caused har harm to the child. Now imagine... The other side of the view where he might have been protecting the child and might have been fearing these noises that could be considered strange or other people around him as a fear of safety for the boy and decided that, you know, there's been many cases where a gorilla has taken care of a boy that has fallen off of a zoo enclosure. Surprisingly, it happens more than once. So. Okay. All right. So let's just briefly go over it. Killing of Harambe, which, by the way... I'm not actually convinced it's Harambe. I feel like it could be Harambe. But, after a few reddits and whatnot, I feel like we'll stick with Harambe for now. Harambe. Harambe. He was born May 27th, 1999. I have, oh, that's interesting, because on May 28th, 2016, tw 1929, what, what, when was he? 1999. 99. I was like, holy moly. 1999. All right. On May 28th, 2016, a three-year-old boy climbed into a gorilla enclosure at the... I'm already hating this. That's why I remember everyone up in an uproar about it. Okay. Climbed into a gorilla enclosure at Cincinnati Zoo, Botanical Garden, and was grabbed and dragged by Harambe, a 17-year-old Western Lowland gorilla. Fearing for the boy's life, a zoo worker shot and killed Harambe. The incident was recorded on video and received broad international coverage and commentary, including controversy over the choice to kill Harambe. A number of primatologists and conservationists wrote later that the zoo had no other choice under the circumstances and that it highlighted the danger of zoo animals in close proximity to humans and the need for better standards of care, which I'm sure most people would agree with. Um, I have a article here that talks with the, like, the zookeeper who made the decision. Nobody even talks about, we just talk about that Harambe got shot and we think of him as a gorilla. Nobody talks about how Harambe comes from a Western Island silverback gorilla, which is critically endangered. Up to date, there are only around 175,000 in the wild. There's totally not even that many anymore. Well, yeah, there's probably crazy. They're, they're probably getting shot left and right. Yeah, dude. All right, since Harambe, since Harambe, okay, zookeeper finally explains what Harambe was actually doing with the kid. Since Harambe, a 17-year-old silverback gorilla was shot dead in Cincinnati Zoo after a four-year-old kid managed to get into its enclosure. Many people were arguing there was no need to kill the animal, claiming that he was actually trying to take care of the boy. However, Amanda Don O'Donohue. A former zookeeper has a whole different opinion, which she expressed in a Facebook post a few days ago. An adult male silverback gorilla has one job, to protect his group. Now, gorillas are considered gentle giants, a, at least when compared with their more aggressive cousins, the chimpanzees. But a 400-pound male gorilla in his prime 
is as strong as roughly ten adult fucking humans. Jesus, what can you bench? What can you bench press? Okay, now multiply that number by ten. <laughs> Dang, that's a strong gorilla. <laughs> yeah. Well, you and know, adult what? male still regular what? I was about to say, you know what's crazy is that there's only 360 gorillas that are captured in a breeding program. So in a captive breeding program, there are only 360 gorillas. And Harambe was one under care of the Cincinnati Zoo. So you got to think, I've never really seen a gorilla in an enclosure, at least in a commonly known zoo. There's none up here where we live. There's none in, I don't even think Baltimore has one. I never saw one in Hawaii. I never saw, you know, I've been to multiple zoos and I have not actually come across, I've seen monkeys, but I have not seen a real function like a giant gorilla, which makes sense to the fact that there are only 360, probably 359 now in a captive breeding program. Now, is that seen because they're endangered? A lot of the gorillas are, but, or is it just because it's like a rare kind of species? Because there's a difference between a monkey and, or a chimpanzee right. or a type of ape over a gorilla. And they were saying chimpanzees are more, actually more violent. Well, chimpanzees are more they're violent. Strong, obviously, they are more strong. Do you know the case? Do you know the, do you know the case, um, uh, the chimpanzee, the guy, the zookeeper that got ripped apart? Or the neighbor who got her face bit off. Yeah, well, I think the guy getting ripped apart is probably a little bit worse. What happened was the guy worked at the zoo, bonded with one of the monkeys that was there, decided to bake him a cake or make him a cake for his birthday. And all the other monkeys saw that this monkey got a cake and they didn't get a cake. So what they do was they broke out of their enclosure and ripped the zoo guy apart. According to their nature. They yeah. ripped off his dick. They ripped off everything. everything. They literally rip off... When it's they fight... His nose, his ears. Or... Well, when they apes fight each other, um, they tend to rip off primitive. anything that you need to survive. Anything that you need that they seem that gonna, you're going to be able to... You're going to have to use. Like, fingers. that's what you need. Yeah, they bite off your fingers, these types of things. Um, Joe Rogan talks about a uh, baby chimp that he worked with on set. And the baby chimp jumped on his back and started banging on his back. Like... You know, tapping on him. It was just a little couple month old baby chimp. And he was like, shit, it actually hurts. Wow. And that already shows you they're really, really strong. Yeah. And just first of all, they're muscular as hell. Wow, yeah, totally. And they talked about the chimp and they said that their back, it felt like when he touched it, it felt like there was, it was like wood. It had like the consistency and the texture of wood. Now, gorillas being a little bit less like, I guess, appearance glorified i guess they're they're seen as big brutes but they're they're not they're not in physical top like strength condition i guess they wouldn't be doing a beauty competition at least compared to a chimp you look at a chimp i don't know dude i think gorillas are the badass of the monkeys i'm not saying they're not but i'm saying when it comes to a chimp they're more likely to win a physique competition in bodybuilding because they're more ripped and jacked yeah oh yeah now if you go to a gorilla they have a gut on them they're also bigger people that's true they do a lot of them have those little pot bellies going on yeah but they still have like huge they packs, have huge forearms their forearms are like they walk than on their, their hands i know their forearms are like bigger than their biceps which is crazy but not only do they walk on their hands they walk on their fists they Just walk literally imagine. knuckle to knuckle with arms first hunched over ten because times, their arms are so big. Ten times like what we're like what we could possibly bench press. So what's what's like a not a record setting weight But an average? But a high. What's a high? Like one eighty five, one ninety five. For most people? Yeah. Okay. So let's do like two hundred pounds. It's like a thousand pounds for a gorilla? I no, mean, more than that. No. You, two 2,000. 2,000. Jeez, yeah. Luis. Well, right, you so see it's like... Rise of the Planet of the Apes, man. Right. What they had, all that. All they the had that the one gorilla in that one enclosure, which goes back to the fact of 360 gorillas in the captive breeding program. Right. So I didn't Spread even out. notice that. That's a, it gives you something to look at with Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah. Now, that's you're watching that. Of. They had one giant gorilla. And they used him for all the heavy lifting. Jumping after a helicopter. Oh, yeah. Leaping from yeah. building, like from a bridge to a helicopter, throwing a cop car, yeah. you know, literally beating the crap out of people with riot shields, like... And, like, Rampage. It's nuts. Like, he was... Rampage, the, they have the, um... What do you call it? Yeah, or King Kong, really. Like, you're able to, like... Well, Rampage George. Right. Yeah. You know? Dude, I want to play that game so bad right now. That one... Yeah, I want to play some Rampage. Just... 
even if even though the monkey wasn't my character, I think I was usually the lizard. I like the rat because it had my name. Yeah, I forgot about that one. Robbie the Wait, rat. Wait, there's like it. more. Lizzie than... the lizard. Yeah, the lizard I liked. There was a, like a King Kong character. That was George. George. The rat. Was there was another one, wasn't there? Because I don't remember the rat. There was a wolf. Wolf, that's what it was, like a blue wolf. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean... Do you it, have, like, a 64? Like, no, I don't have a 64. All right, hang on, wait. Go back to this article that I'm on. All right. All right. Gorilla is 400 pound, male in his prime. 10 adult humans. What can you bench press? Multiply that times 10. Blah, 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 blah. I've watched this video over and over again with Harambe's posturing and tight lips. It's pretty much the stuff of any keeper's nightmares, and I've had many... While working with them. This job is not for the complacent. Gorillas are kind, curious, and sometimes silly, but they are also very large and very strong animals. I always brought I always brought my OCD to work with me, checking and rechecking locks to make sure the animals under my care and I remain separated from before entering to clean. Harabe wasn't trying to protect the kid, he used him to intimidate people. I keep hearing this is what the zookeeper said. I keep hearing that the gorilla was trying to protect the boy. I do not find this to be true. Harambe, the gorilla, reaches for the boy's hands and arms, while only to position the child better for his own displaying purposes. Males do very elaborate displays when highly agitated, slamming and dragging things about. Typically, they would drag large branches, barrels, and heavy-weighted balls around to make as much noise as possible, not in an effort to hurt anyone or anything, usually but just to intimidate, intimidate. This was clear to me that he was reacting to the screams coming from the gathering crowd. Wait, can I just mention something really, really quick? Harambe's birthday was yesterday. So maybe it wasn't... Today's May 28th. Yeah. Harambe's birthday was yeah, May 27th. Yeah, he was 27th. killed one day off. And this is three years from the day he was killed. Well, you gotta think. He was 17 years old. 400 silver pound gorilla. So 400 pound silverback gorilla. Of sheer muscle. And literally, the guy... Wait, you said that he was intentionally... That the guy said that he was going to harm the boy? He was boy? posturing, yeah. Like, well, like displaying him like... There's the the guy that raised um, Harambe. His name was Jerry Stones mm -hmm. from Texas. Said he was very sad about the tragic death of Harambe who he fondly calls the Gentle Giant. What do we know about a Gentle Giant? I don't think that's anything to do with harmful intent. It seems like that's just a, a, a excuse for them killing this creature. I mean, look at this dude. He's a good looking dude. Look at him. Look at this. He's Jack. That's his freaking like, graduation seven, picture right there. He's only 17 years old. It's my senior year photo. He's 17, so that'd probably be when you're a senior. He's like, yeah, I slay. I don't think it, they add dog ears to it, so I think he's actually legit 17 years old. Look, seriously, that's GQ for gorillas. They can actually, Western Island gorillas can be distinguished from other gorilla species by their slightly smaller size, their brown hair, and grayish fur. A Facebook group called Justice for Harambe was created on Sunday, as well as a change.org petition calling for the boy's parents to be held responsible for the boy's death, as well as Harambe's. Wait, so the boy died too? Oh. No, the boy died. What? No. Yeah. No. It says to be held responsible for the boy's death, as well as Harambe's. About 5% of Harambe's kind is killed in the wild each year, aside from hunting, lack of habitat, and infectious diseases also threaten their population. No, the kid didn't die. They killed They killed Harambe before it could, like, do anything unexpected. So maybe this, this article just says that they would have... I think they worded it wrong. They something. should be held responsible for Harambe's death as if their child had died. So, like, the same crime you'd get for a child being killed, the parents should have to undergo that. They should be put to... They should be lethal injection. I mean, to be honest, though, I see... Like, I can, I can play devil's advocate on both sides. Because yeah. if you look at a gorilla, they are scary as shit, man. 
And this is around the time we were watching movies with James Franco showing us Planet of the Apes. Like, (laughs) you can't just freaking throw that in there and expect society not to freak out. Poor Harambe. But, so, what do you, I mean, which way do you go? Do you, do you say... Yeah, Why didn't they use a tranquilizer? I don't think the tranks would have set in fast enough, you know? Well, like, that, he could, yeah. it could have set Harambe off in such a way that he got, like, instantly violent out of defense, you know, like dog in a corner style. Apparently the zoo director, Thane Maynard, said a tranquilizer would not have been effective because it would have taken too long and yeah. could have agitated the 400-pound gorilla. Right. He also added the child was not under attack, but all sorts of things could happen. He was certainly at risk. It was the first time on an animal had to be killed at the Cincinnati Zoo. I don't know, man, because there's so many factors that play into mind, dude. I don't know about... The kid climbed over some enclosure thing to get in there and fall... Like, that's what pisses me off the most. It's not even like... It's that's not, not the only case of this happening. Right, though. right. Now, that should be... Uh, I don't think the parents should be able to sue the zoo for that. Oh, f- I mean, no. you gotta look You gotta look at both advocate sides. One, yep. it's a gorilla. Two, why did the zoo... Why was it that easy for a child to fall off the thing? Three, why didn't the parents have more responsibility over their child... And, you know, it's just, it, there's so many factors at play here. It seems like there's not really anybody to blame. And we just kind of have to accept the outcome that happened. Yeah, there probably could have been some things that could have avoided that situation and probably that certain outcome. But yeah. what happened happened. Let's just move on. It's our own responsibility that we have to pay for. It's like a sacrifice where it's like, sorry, buddy. It's like, sorry that you died for a weird circumstance we can't really explain. Sorry that we put you in this mess and we have to kill you for it. I don't think I've ever been on a fill in the blank where someone was reading me the facts. You're the facts. Thanks. Well, what's the fact of Harambe? I guess there isn't really a fact. It's just, it's a great, you know, it's one of those gray areas. Is he another? I, I do think zoos are important. Um, and it's tricky because, you know, I feel bad for, it's like, I feel bad for all those animals that are enclosed in these really small spaces. I've seen some small ones, but at the same time, like I learned as a child, like important things about the world, you know, that I just, that didn't, you know, spark an interest without seeing it in that way, whether it's an aquarium or it's a, you know, rhinoceroses or rhinoceros. What certain types of experiences? What do you mean? Like, I'm saying, I'm just telling you right now, like, aquariums or, like, going to, like, because I've been to all sorts of zoos, you know? It's just, each one's, I love, freaking love atriums, but I feel bad because the birds aren't freaking soaring, you know? They aren't, like, they should be able to fly for, like, miles, you know? If I can make an enclosure, if I, yeah, if I can make an enclosure that was miles, then cool, but, like, so chimps throw poop because of dominance, mm-hmm. and they masturbate all the time. Yeah. They got the life, man. 17 years of that ain't bad. What, you just want to masturbate the rest of your life? I wouldn't be down to the idea. I think you wouldn't that, be down to I the did, idea? I didn't eat, get it down because we're talking, ah, there's an inside joke, down, get it. <laughs> Keeping it down like cornflakes, man. Holy smokes. I didn't have my bowl of cornflakes today, so I'm feeling pretty passionate Dude, what, inspired. Where is the Smart Star? I can't find. I need the all brand or the total. Why do we have Harambe on a box of Wheaties? He should be on a box of Wheaties. He should be on a lot more than one cereal box. I'm going to make it's, a cereal. You know, this, you know, this led to the thing with the animal crackers? Where they took the animals off the prisoners' thing? Oh, yeah. That was just because PETA was like, there was no justification or there was no punishment or action taken for this death of this innocent animal that's obviously innocent and was protecting a child with a nature-nurture aspect. And 
isn't, I mean, the, so PETA just decides to look at animal crackers like, this is a get, and then we're just like, all right, here, take that if you guys shut up about Harambe. Mm -hmm. But so many people don't even know the true story behind Harambe besides him being a gorilla. Like, I didn't know, and a lot of people have stickers on their cars and these types of things. It became literally a movement of people, like t-shirts, posters, everything possible and no one even knew the true story behind it no one even knows the intent they just thought oh harambe it's just a, it's just a trend like a bell-bottom dress or a certain type of style of hat it's like it's it's here for a couple months and it's gone it's like but in the true aspect of what this really means if you really try and look deep down meaning into it nature versus nurture the argument is nature a gorilla, a massive beast, you know the nature of it's going to be to kill anything that's smaller than it. Or is it the nurture aspect where we're, we're supposed to come from these pre-species, these evolutionary type things that happened to us that became to where we're at today, adapting to our situations and environment. Who's to say that, you know, they, they've done tests with guy chimps and girl chimps putting a truck in front of one of them and putting a teddy bear in front of them. And the girls' chimps always go for the teddy bear and start coddling it and mm -hmm, hugging it. Mm -hmm. And different types of, like, male chimps, they go for the truck. You know, we have these things that separate us. There's not a distinct difference between genders. But there is a distinct difference between genders, if you get what I'm saying. I do. Blue... Natural leaning tendencies. When I say blue, you think boy. When I say pink, you say girl. Well, those sound more like nurture. Well, yeah, I've thought about that a lot. I actually... You know what's funny is I changed it up with... Uh, at work, we have, like, two different color glasses. One has, one has yellow print, one has blue print uh, on these mason jars. And sometimes... I'll do like all the boys if at at a table. Do all the boys or guys blue and all the girls yellow, and then other times I'll just switch it up. But like sometimes I do it, and I just to, like what I don't know. At at this point, it's just I wonder if people actually wonder if I'm doing that on purpose or not. But I mix it up just for the sake of not trying to enforce that whole idea of pink or blue or Stereotypes. anything yeah well yeah i guess it's like you know just because you're a boy doesn't mean you have like can't like pink <laughs> or can't i mean you know. it's not it's not fake it's not like false news or anything like that like it's a real thing there's these factors that attract to different genders obviously but the whole aspect like even with the chimps the very 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 small percentage of the chimps that were tested out of all of them that were tested on picking a truck or a teddy bear and they all kind of follow the gendered notion of the guys pick the truck and the girls pick the teddy bear and started nurturing it immediately like a baby the ones that guys that did pick the teddy bear to nurture seem to have feminine characteristics now is that just because women are naturally care providers like obviously it's seen where we talk about women get paid less and women only really get paid less not on the fact that they don't have the same promotional opportunities we do, but the whole aspect of they're more likely to go home and take care of their family. They have bigger, I guess, aspirations at play when it comes to the development of a child. Yeah. Guys are more likely to stay at work and work harder to get a better job aspect to bring home what can be also considered money or food for the table. You know, guys are seen as the provider while women are seen as the caregivers. You yeah, know? which is really not always the case. It's like, not always the case. There's obviously certain anomalies and scenarios. So many where, women work harder than I, I... For sure. Yeah. I mean, women work just as hard as men do, sometimes better. You know, it's not an anti-feminism thing, but at the same time, it's like... I think it's, I think it's pretty even, honestly. It's our way our society is played. You're going to talk the difference of, like, lifting... 40 pounds difference then okay but like you know what I'm saying like but I know there's this one there's this one chick who works I think she had a kid in one of the last restaurants I worked at and uh, she had two jobs and she was one of the best workers there she worked really hard um, and 
where I was going with that. Oh, she also, uh, she could bench, like, two-something. Uh, she was freaking jacked. Not jacked, but, like, once you really realized how much, once you knew the number, you actually looked at her arms and you're like, oh, she could absolutely destroy anybody in this building right now. Like, yeah, I mean, a Ronda Rousey could obviously destroy a, a random guy on the street, like, yeah. someone that doesn't have any fighting experience. Totes. But like I said, there's certain people, obviously, that break that notion, but it's the whole nature and nurture aspect, and it's the, the final question for this episode. Is, did they kill Harambe because they totally disnotion the nurture aspect and just saw that it was a guy gorilla and probably wasn't having the tendency to take care of the boy? Or would it might have been different if Harambe was a girl? Or is this larger plot of world domination by the New World Order... You're going real deep in the Illuminati, death, bro. <laughs> That's like taking a short because walk for... Or a long walk for a short drink of water there, pal. Because the key of Solomon was hidden in the... Hidden gorilla in the enclosure. gorilla weight bench. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's it's just difficult to think, dude. Cause... Oh, well, I mean... Okay, hang on. So, the zoo thing. We have this... Here... He was dragging the boy through water, though. If you watch the video, it's kind of like... Right. You gotta make an d- assessment. You gotta make you gotta a split-second s- decision. What are you gonna do? You're gonna... Well, how else he's supposed to carry you... the boy? He walks on his freaking hands. Right. Right. If he opens up his mouth to put the boy in there, you gotta think what's coming from the monkey's mind. He's probably just like, I'm dealing with a difficult task. How many times have you done a difficult task and then look back at it like, oh, I could have did it like this. It would have been a thousand times easier. You know, it's there's all a lot about, going on. People are screaming. You know, there's tons of people, there's tons of things going on. That gorilla could have done something weird. You never know with all that going on to just to do some sort of display, and like totally rip that boy apart. You never know. You never know. So they had to do what they had to do. But what I was gonna say was is that as much as this pisses me off, and it does greatly. For, like, various reasons. One, I guess we should have better enclosures that little kids can't somehow still climb over. Even though that sucks for us because it's not going to be as immersive. But whatever. I guess we got to deal with the stupid humans. Which we're all part of, the traffic. Anyways, hang on. And then also, I guess I can't care too much at the same time. Because, like, I feel like shit I'm going to be doing with that I want to do, at least in the future, with, like, I don't know, biology and stuff, I'm probably going to be, like, doing a lot of experiments with mice and stuff, and, you know, just not their life. So it's like, you know, it's part of the process to me. Like, and, 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 oh, it, and it, right, and also, and, right, we've evolved to this point, <laughs> you know, who's to say that this is wrong at this point to happen? This might just be a natural part of the evolution, evolutionary timeline for most forms of life. They have to reach this point where they have to study themselves and that involves some sort of, like, sacrifice. That, and also, remember when I was talking about that, um, replacing, like, various foods with, like, actual humans, making that, like, fake, like, food documentary thing, but it's, like, actually horrific because instead of, like, seeing, like, like, hanging cow meat and stuff, it's, like, humans like it's just replacing one for another to illustrate like how screwed up it is that we do certain things to other forms of life yeah what i was thinking of is what if like it was aliens were a lot larger and like i was i made a caesar salad the other day and i put anchovies on there like what if we were like somebody in that documentary was like a form of life like just opened it up and it was like 12 flattened humans and they put them on their salad. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's all the same shit. This is what happens when you podcast at midnight when you're barely on any sleep. You start tripping your balls <laughs> off and finding aliens in Harambe's death. No, it's... I'm saying it's it's like a relative thing. Like, from where we are to Harambe, aliens are to us. You get what I'm saying? Like... I think it was a giant social movement thing that just became something to kind of point... Your mom's a social movement. Well, the whole idea, you're trying to point uh, the direction. Let's see, this is around the time when Bush and all that is in office. So you got to think 
all the political stuff that's going on there, it just seems like it was just another way for the news to focus on a different thing and kind of put pressure off on the president. You know, like, totally forget about what the president's up to and the shady stuff that's doing. Let's worry about Harambe. Let's worry about this type of stuff. You know, that that would be a conspiracy theory for one, but... Yeah, I don't, it, I don't buy it. It's the whole aspect. Like, I mean, uh, what's... What's morally right? What's you know, right? Exactly. Whoever What's took the right? shot had a had a choice to make, and that choice goes down <sighs> deep into his psychological behavior and his environmental factors that he was raised on. But you know, our culture is seen more likely to disregard an animal's life over a human's, and whether that's morally right. right or morally acceptable depends on where you're from. It could have been a totally different thing in the Africa Zoo. I'm saying it doesn't matter. Even though I value all forms of life, I'm saving, like, friggin' flies and dragonflies and birds and all this stuff. I saved a dragonfly at my work the other day. See? Yeah, and then you ate a steak later. You know what I mean? Like, it. it's like... I didn't eat a steak you, later. You... Dude, you're being too literal. I'm had saying... jello. Oh, well, fine. You had crushed up horses and bones of other animals and other things. Damn right. So, and then I used a <laughs> bottle of glue later. Yeah, and then you, exactly. And then you saved another fly. And then you ate some more meat and bones. We're all constantly, you know... We have to consume to in order to live. We literally have to kill to be alive. Something. We have to kill in order to live all the time. So for me, it's like, once you realize that, you know, it's like going back to that, like, you know, the Bhagavad Gita thing. That whole deal with God, where it's, it's like... It's all relatives, like, it's all trading off and self-consuming, and... How would you... Life doesn't matter, and death doesn't matter. It. How would you end this Harambe topic? Because, to be honest with you, it's just like... Is it a social injustice, or is it just another death? I mean, to be honest with you... It is what it is. It's it's just it's it's what we chalk it up to be. Whether you want to take deeper meaning into it, I mean, we should learn how to... there's activist rights on it. I don't like how they replaced Harambe like on the day the same day of his death, um, at the same zoo. They just replaced him with an older gorilla. But I mean, it's it's cool that if you look at both sides of the argument, they did that. And I want then, a Harambe statue. But the whole factor is the zoo improved the enclosure now, so now the gorillas can be viewed safely without any danger coming to the people. They're in an enclosed environment now, right. like a dome. Danger to themselves. Well, it's just the whole aspect of, like, maybe the architect's the one to blame. Maybe right. Why did he make it so a boy could easily fall right. off the thing and right. knock himself out, to be yeah. honest with you? Yeah. Well, anybody that wants to listen to this episode of Fill in the Blank, run by Corey himself. Corey, if you want to sign us out here, dog. No, you do it up. Harambe. Harambe. A man, a beast, a and legend. A legend.